And good morning, one and all. Welcome to the Wealth Guardians Radio Show. Happy December to you. Merry Christmas. It is that time of the year. Folks, um, I think we've got a really, really good program scheduled uh, for you today. Bryce came up with an idea a few weeks back that I really liked, and his idea was... uh, Let's do a show where the audience can get to know each of us a little bit better than they have before. So what we're going to do today is a bit different. We're going to ask each other questions, personal questions about our past and so forth and how we ended up into this business. So so stay tuned for that. I think you're going to like it. Bryce, good morning. How you doing? I'm doing good, Doug. I hope you are as well. I am. It's oh, playoff time. It's playoff time. Yep. Uh, we Doug and I both love the football, and uh, boy, the the games coming up now in college are going to be really fun. And uh, in pro games, it'll be uh, the winding down period to see who makes the cut and who doesn't in the next couple of weeks. Yep. So I'm looking forward to that. And folks, as normal, before we get going here, we want to uh, just pause for a minute and thank all of our service members, our veterans, our first responders. Thank you so much for everything you do, the sacrifices you make, and the f- sacrifice your family makes so that you can do it for us. Again, thank you. We, we appreciate do appreciate it. it in the families, and we know this is the hardest time of year to be away from your family. So thank you specifically at this time of year. Yeah, Doug, uh, I wanted to do a, little, a show a little bit different here. I know week after week we come in here and talk about uh, what we know as far as retirement planning and financial planning. So we, people, if they listen to our, our backlog catalog, they know that we know what we're talking about when it comes to that. But we don't spend nearly much time talking about ourselves, and I think that's an important aspect as well. You want to have uh, trust and a connection with uh, the uh, firm or the individuals who uh, help you uh, retirement plan or help manage your money. So I wanted to spend a, an episode just talking about you and me a little bit more on the personal side than on the professional side. Yeah, and I guess I get to start, right? Well, that's that's the way you wanted to line it up here. Yeah. So you're going to ask me some questions here. I don't know what these questions are ahead of that's time, right. and you don't know. I'm going to in the second segment. I'm going to ask you some questions, and you don't know what those questions are. And by the way, when Bryce came up with this idea, I told him, I said, uh, there's uh, nothing sacred here. Put it all on the table. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. Let's do it. Well, listen, you've you've been with the firm now, what, uh, going on four years, right? It'll be four years in March. Well, you know, I I view that as a major positive for our firm. I I hope you feel the same way. Oh, absolutely, I do. This this career path has uh, taught me a lot about life, uh, responsibilities, and a lot about myself as well and relating to other people and uh, what uh, being able to connect with them and uh, find out what we have in common. We, there's a lot of interaction that you and I do in this job with other people, and I always learn a little bit about myself and a little bit about others whenever I have those interactions. Well, I'm going to give you a little heads up. I'm going to get into, in a minute, uh, how you ended up into this uh, this business. Before I get there, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about your dad on on this show, especially around Veterans Day. Uh, Your dad was an Air Force pilot who lost his life uh, and all the crew members in a B-52 accident. And um, I don't think you ever knew your dad. Um, No, I was 10 months old. Yeah, you never knew your dad. So can you give me an idea of what that was like? When when was the first time that you were made aware of your dad and the accident and so forth? Uh, well, that happened up in Maine, and uh, we were at Lauren Air Force Base. I was, like I said, I was 10 months old, and that was an accident that didn't need to happen, unfortunately. I won't go into that. But um, the first memories that I have were in um, Colorado after we had moved from Loring to California and then from California to Colorado. And my mom changed her career from being a nurse in the Air Force to being a lawyer. And I just remember growing up with it being her and me and knowing that I had had a dad, but that he passed away. There were pictures of him around the house, and my mom would talk about him. And so that's my earliest memories of knowing that he was gone, was seeing those pictures and, uh, and him not being around. And my mom, of course, always talking up what a, uh, what a gentleman he was and how um, driven he was. He was young. I think he was only around 26 years old when he passed. So he was already a B-52 pilot at that point. So he was driven, and he had uh, other aspirations as well. So that's what I remember about uh, about him not being around was that he was a good man. He was a wonderful father. He enjoyed uh, being a father. He would sit me down on his knee and watch Star Trek episodes with me <laughs> and um, Washington Redskins football games uh, with me. So that's I, I like to think that's how I enjoyed both of those, uh, the Washington Red, not the Washington, football in general and uh, Star Trek. 
Well, I'm a Trekkie too, so we got that in common. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's a, a sad story. Um, you know, it's uh, never easy when a service member loses his life, and especially in that situation, it didn't need to happen. I will, I will take just a moment to credit. Uh, my mom did get remarried when I was about 10 to a, another Air Force uh, pilot, um, John, who's my stepfather. And he had an impossible task, um, stepping in at around uh, 30 years old to be a father to an unruly 10-year-old kid who had not gotten much in the way of discipline for 10 years of his life. And that was an impossible task for him. He wasn't an experienced uh, parent, but he stepped up and uh, did the best he could with me. And I will always give kudos to him as well for taking on a task he didn't have to take on and doing the best he could with uh, a challenge. Uh, You grew up in Colorado. You even named your daughter Aspen. I love that. Yes, yes. Um, you went to the University of Colorado, I believe. Yep, see you. And then the Peace Corps. Peace Corps, yep. How in the world did you find your steps into the financial industry after that? Yeah, that's a good question. So the Peace Corps actually taught me quite a bit uh, about life, about appreciating what you have and understanding the commonalities, even on the other side of the world, where life is very, very different than what we experience here in the United States. You still see the commonalities of of all human beings. So that was a great experience for me. Um, I had gotten my degrees in, in education, special education and education, and uh, speech pathology specifically, and uh, communications was a minor in there. And so I started teaching. And then when I had my own family, um, I too had stepped into a step-parent role and then had my own daughter. And uh, being a teacher all day and being around kids all day and then coming home to my own kids, I realized that's probably not, I'm not going to be able to give the best to both. So I moved away from teaching into a kind of a temporary field. I knew it wasn't permanent, but I had to do something. So I moved into some phone consulting uh, sales position. And that was right at the time of the financial crisis. And that company shut down shortly after, about two years after I had started with them. My supervisor, got a job with T. Rowe Price, and T. Rowe Price was hiring at that time, even though the financial crisis was just st- starting. And it was shortly thereafter that he called me up, and he had about 12 people on his team at the company I'd worked for under him. And he said, Bryce, you're at the top of my list. They're looking to hire more people here, and they asked me if I knew anybody from where we had worked, and uh, so I'm reaching out to you. Are you still looking for a position? And I realized that what I had landed into was not probably long-term ideal, and I said, yeah, absolutely. I know T. Rowe Price is a, is a good company, so let me uh, do some research on the field. I think I can step into whatever, whatever role might be asked of me. And... Um, Passed their interview process. It was very, uh, very challenging interview process, but uh, went on board there and became a financial advisor. Got my uh, FINRA licenses through them and uh, liked the position. Liked it was in a sense still teaching as it is here in our job. We are still uh, passing on information and helping people be all the wiser uh, on the decisions that they make. So in a sense, what we would still do here is encompassing my teaching a little bit. Well, you know, when you look back on your career, I look back on 30 some odd years of it, there's a couple things that stand out. Since you've been with us almost four years ago, now I don't want you to say names or anything, but is there one particular event that just pops into your mind, either is a big surprise or you were able to help somebody or it just went sideways? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, I don't know that there is just one specific case, but what speaks to me about when I know that I've helped somebody is when we get to the part of the conversation, when somebody's coming in here and, and going through our planning process, when we get to the part of the conversation about risk versus risk tolerance, that I think is probably one of the more significant aspects of our planning process that you and I do, Doug, is we take a look at what somebody's risk tolerance is. That is different for every couple or every individual that comes in here. The amount of losses that they feel are acceptable versus the amount of losses if the market goes down in their portfolio uh, is unacceptable. We help identify that uh, that red line for people. They, most people do not have any idea where that red line is until we start drilling down on that. And then we use a specific software to do that. And then we use a specific that same specific software to identify the risk in their current portfolio. Once in a while, that is properly aligned. But I would say that's only about one out of 10 times. The other nine out of 10 times, 
those are either to some degree or another, and oftentimes wildly different from each other. The risk that they're taking in their portfolio, if another 2008 market-like cycle happened versus the market-like cycle versus uh, what would happen to their portfolio compared to what they feel is acceptable can be very, very different. And once we've identified that, that's when the eyes really start opening. And that's when our clients realize, hmm, I'm now glad that I sat down with, with Doug and Bryce because had I gone into retirement like I'm currently aligned, this might have spelled some problems that I wasn't aware of. So now their eyes are open and now they're really attentive to the rest of the process from there on out. Every time that that happens, that speaks to me. Yeah, you know, I've always said that second meeting is the eye opener or the jaw dropper for, for our clients. And uh, folks, if you'd like to see that, if you'd like to experience that, all you got to do is pick up the phone and call us at 336 336- 391-3409, and uh, we'll let you have your eye-opening experience. Well, when we come back from break, uh, Bryce turns the tables on me, and I get to answer his questions. Let's flip it. All right, folks, stick around because you don't want to miss that one. And welcome back to the holiday edition of the Wealth Guardians Radio Show. Thank you for sticking around through the break for us, folks. Let me ask you something. If you're listening, and I think you are, and you're about five to seven years from retirement, and you want to confirm that you're making the best decision for retirement, at least financially speaking, well, I've got good news for you. We offer at this time of year and every time of year a no-cost, no-obligation second review so you can learn how to retire the job while still keeping the paycheck. But the ball's in your court. If you want to have that discussion with us, you got to pick up the phone and give us a call at 336 391 34 0-9-336-391-3409. Doug and I would love to sit down with you and see what services or expertise we might be able to help in helping you plan for retirement. Just tell them Bryce sent you. Now, uh, thank you, like I said, for sticking around through the break. On the first segment of this holiday edition, you heard Doug asking me unrehearsed questions on uh, about me personally and now we're going to flip the tables and i'm sitting here in chair one and doug is over here in the uh uh hot the, seat the hot seat that's what <laughs> i was that's the term i was looking for thank you so in the hot seat this segment is doug and doug does not know what these questions are but again the reason for us doing this is you've heard us week in and week out talk about what we know about financial planning but you don't hear us talk nearly enough about ourselves and i think that's important to make a connection with the just like making a connection with your doctor or any other professional that you go to you want to make a have some kind of connection have an understanding of who is managing your money as well so these are my questions for doug uh first one is completely unscripted i'm going to go off the uh, off the charts here and doug at the beginning of this year you had a goal that you had set out <laughs> on your rowing machine to get in a mil with a million meters, right? A million meters. A million meters. How many miles is that, by the way? Oh gosh, I did figure that one time. I, I don't even remember top of my head. It's a right? lot. It's a lot. It's a it's a bunch of miles. A lot and then some. So how are we on that uh, on that goal? Well, you know, our favorite answer around here is it depends. Okay. <laughs> so here here's what I mean. If you go by the calendar year, January 1st to December 31st, I'm off the goal. Okay. But the rowing season is different. Okay. The rowing season goes from the end of April, 1st of May. So if you look at it in that perspective, I am slightly behind schedule. Interesting way but, of looking at it. But okay. but, but the, the neat thing is the concept, too, people have these challenges along the way to kind of keep you motivated. Ah, okay. So the holiday challenge is to do 100,000 meters between um, Thanksgiving and the end of the year. And uh, if, if for every 10,000 meters you do, it's, they donate some money to charity for you. Oh, really? So I'm, I'm, I'm well ahead of that. Uh, this morning I did uh, 5,000 meters, so uh, that's... Uh, Oh, excellent. I'm good. All right. Well, it's certainly more than what you rode last year, right? So you're oh, way yeah. ahead of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, there we yeah. go. All right, so now for the real questions. And here we go. Questions for Doug. Doug, what event or experience in your life do you feel most shaped who you are today? Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if there was a single event. I would have to think that my upbringing, you know, my dad was um, – you know, he wasn't strict. He was firm. He taught me the value of money uh, pretty early on in life. 
you know, taught me to be a, an honest young man and try to do my, my best to, for myself and for others around me, that just kind of was with me my entire life. So it wasn't one single event okay. uh, that shaped my life. Okay. Well, you were in the, uh, you know, that, and that, that's just a tribute to fathers out there everywhere. I like to think that I did a good job as, as a father, and we talked in the first segment about my not having one for uh, a good part of my life. So, yeah, power to uh, to your dad and all dads out there. Uh, I've worked with you for a number of years now, and I see you as being nothing but honest and straightforward and uh, caring with our clients. So, that, you know, it seems certainly seems that whatever lessons your dad taught you paid off there. Now, you served in the Navy, and certainly there was something in the Navy. Let me Let me ask it this way. The person that you were when you went into the Navy – versus when you got out of the Navy, how had you improved as a person? Well, that's a good question, too. Uh, <laughs> Thought-provoking. You know, when I went into the Navy, uh, I wanted to fly. Uh, that, that I think that had a lot to do with my dad as well, because he was in the Navy. He wasn't an aviator. He was on an aircraft carrier. He was a bosun's mate, but he brought home a lot of pictures and movies that he'd made, and it just kind of, you know, it stuck with me. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, and... Um, so anyway, um, that was something that I had always had a goal to do, is, is to go in the Navy and fly airplanes. Going in, uh, it was definitely, for me, not easy. Going into flight school, you're competing with uh, Naval Academy grads. Mm. Uh, you're competing with MIT grads, Notre Dame, Duke. And here I am, an East Carolina grad, and... Uh, you know, I did not have the technical training. I was a business major, so it's super competitive. So I guess one aspect of it is it made me a better competitor. Okay. You know, in the Navy, you, you absolutely cannot cheat uh, to get ahead. You see too much of that in this day and age. So I learned how to compete, compete hard, but compete fairly. And uh, leadership, you know, learning how to lead your troops, being fair, being honest with them, but at the same time, you have to direct them and be firm with them. So all of that, I think, combined to help me, you know, convert from being a naval officer, a military officer, into a civilian life and, and being the uh, uh, owner of um, an investment firm. Outstanding answer. And that was unscripted. So thank you very much for that. You gave a good detail. I didn't know that you uh, had gotten into the Navy as somewhat as an influence from your father. I, didn't, I was never aware that he had been in the Navy as well. So th thanks for his service on top of that. So here we're going to change gears a little bit. Next question. If you could spend more free time, pastime, doing one thing in life that you enjoy, hmm. what would it be? Oh, boy. Um, right now what I would think of is spending more time with the family, especially the grandkids. Don't get to do too much of that. But, um, you know, more family time because that's, uh, that's what it's all about. That is. That's what we work to get to a certain point. And when you retire is to be around those loved ones. There's something about family that just uh, nothing else seems to fill that, uh, that hole if you don't have the family. So I, I can certainly appreciate that. What do you appreciate most? I think we're going to go back now a little bit to the Navy question and how you transition from the Navy into a financial planner. What do you appreciate most? about being a financial planner, or another way of saying it is what resonates with you most about this career day in and day out? That's actually an easy question. The biggest thing about this business in particular, since we specialize in retirement planning, is all the families we've helped. This career is definitely financially rewarding for us, but way beyond that, helping a family, helping their dream of retirement, actually come true to me that's a calling that is the best thing about our business that's what i love about our business the moment we can tell somebody yeah you can retire it's got a problem here it is on the board it's black and white it's numbers it's just numbers and they sit back and they look at it and for the first time they realize yeah i'm there after 30 40 years we can do this. There's no better feeling. That's a huge chapter change for people. And when they, mm -hmm. most, for most people, when they come to us, they're not aware of when they can 
retire. Yeah, they they have right. an idea, maybe. They certainly know when they would want to. Some people love their jobs and want to keep doing it for you know, until they're 70 or so. Other people really don't like their jobs or they're just getting physically beat up over the years of having done it and they're ready to quit and they just don't know. So I, I hear you. When, when you give them that answer and say, hey, we've run the numbers, uh, you, were, you were thinking you had to work five more years. Well, just one more year should do it and you'll be in a financial sound enough position where you don't have to uh, answer to the man anymore. You know, there was a time I thought I wanted, wanted to run a hedge fund, but no, nah, not anymore. Not this anymore. Is, this is it, man. This yeah. is this is the this is the dream come true. Running a hedge fund would have very little uh, <laughs> client relation. No, I wouldn't. And uh, that's very different than what we do here. Um, okay, so the last question. So you got to make this one last here, Doug. Last question. I want you to think <laughs> about this. What selfish accomplishment, meaning for yourself or achievement? No matter how impossible or unlikely it might seem, put put realism aside. What selfish accomplishment or, tr or achievement do you wish you could have achieved when all is said and done? If a book was written about you, here's the accomplishment. And I'm not talking about like achieving world peace. I'm talking about selfish, getting to the top of um, of Mount Everest, something along those lines. What what accomplishment do you wish that you could have achieved, even if it's unrealistic? Dude, that is a tough one for me. I. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, I, I just don't think in terms of being selfish and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, I've achieved a lot, and I'm proud of what I've done. But I don't know. I've got plenty of goals left. I'm not done yet. Talk about one or two of those goals then. Well, I'd like to see this firm get to uh, $200 million in assets under management, and we're well on our way to that. You know, I'd like to, to expand the firm. Uh, I think we can probably do that in 22. Just help more people. And yeah, absolutely. That's that. Like I said before, that that is that's what it's all about. But uh, you know, something personal. I don't know. Golly, I mean, how many toys and gadgets can one have? You right. Know? You know. I'll, I'll give you. I'll if if that question had been asked of me, just to give you an idea here. Um, I love drumming. I, I really am not sure that I'm going to be able to keep drumming because of the issues I've had with my wrist recently. I'm, I'm having to give up disc golf. Um, can't do a couple of other things, like uh, mountain biking that involve my wrist. But I love drumming. And I think back to what band, if I could have been a drummer for a band, what band would I have wanted to be a drummer for? And it would have been the Rolling Stones because they have, in my opinion, the best, longest most expanded um, repertoire of music out of any band out there. They've just been around for so long, and there's so many good songs out there that every show I would have just loved been behind the kit and drumming. So something along those lines, anything that you can think of besides just uh, helping more people? Well, you know, if you want to do play that kind of game, yeah, I can go back and I can say, you know, at the first segment I told you I was a Trekkie too. Well, I always wanted to be an astronaut. There you go. And I had a chance, you know, when right. I was getting out of the Navy – Going into this business, uh, the captain asked me what, what he can do to keep you in the Navy. And I said, well, you know, if you can get me to test pilot school, I'll, I'll stay. Because TPS is the first step into going into astronaut training. Well, that didn't happen, obviously. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's just one memory. And, and uh, it's just one of those ways you weave your uh, road around uh, to life and you end up where you are. That is one of the high watermarks for a lot of uh, aviators and pilots is an astronaut. Yeah, well. That's kind of the ultimate realm out there so far as we know. it is. Captain being, Kirk was my hero. Yeah, very good. All right, folks, well, that uh, we might make this an annual tradition, not sure. But anyway, if any of this spoke to you as far as Doug's goals and ambitions, mine, and you'd like to sit down with us and see what we can do for you as far as financial planning and help you prepare for your retirement goals and objectives, uh, give us a call, 336 391-3409. We'd love to sit down with you and see how we can help you. 336-391-3409. We do hope you have a healthy and happy and fulfilling holiday season here, and we'll catch you here next week as well. Take care.